All right, so in this problem, we're looking at some thermal physics, some thermodynamics, and in particular, we're looking at heat flow. So question 17.103 from Jung and Friedman, University of Physics, we've got a brass, a copper, and an aluminium rod uh, welded together, each with cross-section 2.3 centimeters, uh, so that should be squared, I guess, rather than cubed, uh, to form a 54 centimeter long rod with the copper in the middle. So the free end of the brass is at 100 Celsius and the free end of the aluminium is at zero. There's no heat loss to the outside world, we'll say, uh, or, you know, through the curved surfaces and the steady state heat current is established. So what's the temperature at the junction of the brass and the copper, at the junction of the copper and the aluminium and the heat current through the aluminium section? So here's our schematic diagram of what's going on here. We've got our three uh, rods set up, brass, copper and aluminium and their correct lengths. And the first part of the question is asking, what's T1 and what's T2? So T1, excuse me, is the cop is the temperature of the brass copper interface. T2 is the temperature of the copper aluminium interface. So the relevant equation here for us is the heat flow equation. So the heat flow equation tells us, so capital H is heat flow, is equal to, this would be the Greek letter, uh, sorry, this is just a K times A, uh, times TH minus TC, and I'll explain these in a moment, over L. So K is the coefficient of thermal conductivity for the material. A is the cross-sectional area. TH minus TC is the temperature at the hot end minus the temperature of the cold end. And then L is the length of the bar that we're dealing with. So we'll call, uh, let's let's call the, so just, just for notation's sake, we'll, we'll call the aluminium part of the bar A, the brass part of the bar B and the copper part of the bar C. So we've got section A, section B and section C. And in coming in at this end, we've got 100 degrees. Whoops, let's do that in black just to avoid any confusion. So we've got 100 degrees C coming in here and we've got zero degrees C coming out the other end. So there's heat flowing through that bar. And um, the law of conservation of energy is going to tell us that the heat flow in all parts of that bar is constant. So you might have noticed in, in part C of this, it asks you for the heat flow through the aluminium section of the bar. But that's going to be the same as the brass, the copper and the aluminium. They're all going to be, have the same heat flow because of the law of conservation of energy. So what's going to differ from bar to bar is how much temperature drops across a certain length of the bar. But the heat flow is going to be the same. So we've got our heat flow equation, and we know that the heat flow in all sections is going to be the same. So we can equate the heat flows for the different materials. So uh, in order to find out these temperatures, we need, so T1 and T2, we need to find out the heat flows across that junction. So the heat flow, let's, we can set up two equations now. Um, for the brass and the copper, first of all, we can say that the heat flow through the brass is equal to the heat flow through the copper. So that allows us to set up a new equation then that says the following. So the co coefficient of thermal conductivity of the brass times the cross section area is equal to, now at, te at T1, uh, the temperature of the hot end is 100 degrees Celsius and the temperature of the cold end is T1 divided by L. So that's one equation and that's gonna be equal to the heat flow uh, through the copper bar. So what that tells us is that we've got Kc, which is the heat, uh, thermal co conductivity of copper, times T1 minus T2, which is the temperature at both ends of the copper bar, if you notice. If you look at our diagram here, at the start of the copper bar, we've got T1, and at the end of the copper bar, we've got T2. And the heat flow through the brass and the copper is the same, which allows us to make this equation. And oh, we, we need to specify the length, so I forgot to put my subscript B in there, because remember, in this problem, the bars are all of different lengths. So that gives us an equation where we can figure out the temperatures of T1 of T and T2. But there are two unknowns here, T1 and T2. So we can't, we can't solve this yet. So now we can also equate the heat flow in the brass rod to the heat flow in the aluminium rod. And this is going to help us solve the problem. And you'll see where that is uh, shortly. So the heat flow through the brass is equal to the heat flow through the aluminium. So let's set up our equation again. So the heat flow through the brass is Kb times A times 100 degrees Celsius minus T1 over the length of the brass rod. And the, the heat flow through the aluminium part is going to be Ka times A 
oops, Ka times A times now. What's the temperature differential for the bra for the aluminium? It's T2 minus zero degrees C over La, which is the length of the aluminium. And we can simplify that a little bit uh, more. We can get rid of the zero here, and that gives us Ka times A, which is the area times T2 over the length of the aluminium. So now we've got two equations here, and let's just sort of link them so you know what we're doing. We've got these two equations, or sorry, I, I guess we've got this one equation on the top, and then we've got this equation on the bottom. So now we've got two equations, and we've got two unknowns. We've equated the, what's going on in the brass, and we've got we've equated what's going on in the copper and the aluminium. So we've we've made our two equations, and now what we can do is we've got our own two unknowns t two and t one, and we can actually in this case, and it's a long time I have to say since I've used simultaneous equations to solve uh, a problem, but we can use just simultaneous equations, substituting one of these equations into the other. And I'm not going to go through that in detail because there's actually quite a lot of steps, and it took me quite a, a long time to go through it. So we leave that as an exercise for you. And um, so we can we can basically cancel out all the A's first of all. So you know the area is common to all of them. So we can get rid of A, and then we can use simultaneous equations to solve for T1 and T2. Before doing that, we need to know the thermal conductivity. So that's the last thing we don't know. So the thermal conductivity of aluminium is 205 uh, watts per meter per Kelvin. The thermal conductivity of brass is 109 watts per meter per Kelvin. And the thermal conductivity of copper is something like 385. 385 watts per meter Kelvin. Now, and we've so we've got our lengths, we've got our thermal conductivities. We do our simultaneous equations and solve for T1 and T2. And when we do that, we get T1 is equal to 59.809 degrees Celsius and T2 is 42.740. So when we do our when we do our simultaneous equations and solve for T1 and T2, we get these two temperatures. So if we use the correct number of significant figures, we get uh, T2 is 59.8 degrees, whoops, 59.8 degrees Celsius and T2 is 42.7. 42.7 degrees Celsius. And a little, let's just put a, a box around those guys. Oops, doing red, I'm trying to do a straight line. So there are the answers to part A and B of this problem. And a little sanity check, if you look back at our diagram, uh, sorry, this should be T1, ah, too many colors. This is T1, and what we see is T1 is higher than T2, which we expect because the heat is flowing from the left to the right. It's lower than 100, which we expect, and then T2 is also greater than zero. So we haven't made any gross calculational errors. Things look pretty much as they should when we solve those simultaneous equations for T1 and T2. So the last part that we want to figure out is the heat flow in the aluminium section. Okay, so we'll just mark this as part C, and I'll just write in here that this is A and B, respectively, so we solve them both together. So for part C, I mean, it's, again, a pretty... Uh, straightforward case of plugging in the numbers. So the heat flow is equal to the thermal conductivity of aluminium. Whoops, let's make that smaller. Should be a subscript. Times the area times, say, uh, T2 flowing across that junction over the length of the aluminium. And what we get then, so flowing into to the aluminium, uh, we've got a temperature of T2 at the hot end, zero at the cold end. So our TH minus TC just reduces to T2, as we did earlier on. And when we plug in the numbers there, um, we get, let's just put it in for fun, we get uh, 203, 205 for the um, conductivity, times the area was 2.3 centimeters uh, squared, I believe. 2.3 centimeters squared. And the T2 we had was 42.7. And we'll use the all of the digits we had. And let me just put in the temperature there, degrees C. And so that's what we have on top. 
and that's all then going to be divided by 0 0.24 uh, meters, 0 0.24 meters on the bottom. And that gives us 8.40 joules per second. And that's the same as 8.40 watts. So the heat flow through the aluminium bar is 8.40 watts. But we know that the heat flow at all points in the composite bar or, you know, in, in, in the, the, the different sections is 8.40 watts. So, you know, we could double check that. We could take the equation for the heat flow that we derive for the brass or the copper and what we would find is that we get the same answer so that's our nice uh, sanity check at the end so as i said I, I sort of skipped over the bit where we solved the simultaneous equation so that's one for your uh, maths book if you're a little bit out of practice with simultaneous equations but you, it works and it solves the problem for us